Hello, everyone. Welcome to the third installment of the Outbuild Trailer Talk live webinar. I see we already have a bunch of folks. I will just give about two minutes for everyone else to join and then we'll kick things off. Oh, oh it, cuts, it cuts your music. That's okay. Yeah, I guess I can't play music and present at the same time. Boring. All right. So here. At 40. Okay. People are still popping in, um, but I know your time is valuable. So I'm going to go ahead and start. Today, we will be covering how to empower the field team with the Outbuild iPad app. If you have a team, anybody in the field that does not have um, access to a laptop or desktop, it does not matter because you can literally build your look ahead on site with our iPad, um, Outbuild iPad app. Um, so for today, um, I will keep going um, with this presentation. Um, on our agenda, we are going to start with intros. We will be introducing a new team member today, as well as some um, little admin stuff. Make sure we are utilizing the chat and the webinar tools correctly. After that, I'm going to move on to a presentation about the iPad app, not only a, um, a live demo of what it can do, but also the why behind um, why it exists and how you can leverage that um, with the web version. After that, we're gonna move into Outbuild R&D. So what we have coming up, that is where we would like your guys' feedback. If there is something on that list you want more details about, or if you have any suggestions, please utilize that help chat or the Q&A section. Um, and then after that, um, we will have a live Q&A um, portion of this webinar. And then we have a couple polls for you. Um, and then after that, we will set you free um, to enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. <clears throat> um, we target this at 45 minutes. Um, I think the presentation is going to sit right around that 20 minute mark. Um, last time we went over because there was some awesome questions at the end, um, but we'll keep it moving. We'll try to keep it nice and tight at 45 minutes. Webinar tools. For this presentation, you do have the option to utilize the chat. Um, so to carry conversation, uh, ask questions, point things out, utilize that chat. Um, you, we also have the Q&A. So if there are specific questions that you want to ask about the different functionalities with the, within the iPad, um, you can uh, insert those questions there. I will either We will either answer those questions live or um, we will answer those in the Q&A section. You also, if you're feeling adventurous, you can raise your hand and ask a question live. All right, moving on. Um, so these faces are not just off center because I don't know how to create a presentation. We are adding an additional face. Um, as you can see, there is four of us today. Skylar Dubois is the newest member of the success team. Um, I'll let her introduce herself, but I'll just gas her up a little bit. Uh, before coming to Outbuild, she was with ADP where she was implementing ADP's Workforce Now, which is a software for payroll um, in HR. She was working with CFOs and accountants of um, Fortune 500 companies. Um, one of the companies that we worked with together in her past was Emirate Airlines. Um, so she has a true heart of a teacher if you have a conversation with her, which you will in either help chats or future training sessions, even if you're having the worst day by the end of it, you will leave with a smile. Um, but enough about Skylar. I will um, introduce myself again. I'm sure you guys know me uh, by now, but I'm Brittany Evans. I am the customer success manager for the East Coast. I reside in Norfolk, Virginia. Um, I also worked at ADP with Skylar, as well as a construction company um, located in Virginia Beach, Virginia, where I was the office manager. I have experience in both um, MS project as well as in-house scheduling softwares. Mm -hmm. uh, but as you can tell, I'm very passionate about uh, what we do here at Outbuild, bringing together the field teams with the office team so they're no longer disconnected. Um, and I will stop talking and let Mike and Ben uh, introduce themselves. Ben, you go first. All right, perfect. I wanted to go first anyways. Uh, <laughs> hey, folks, my name's Ben. You've probably seen me in the help chats. You've probably seen me in the training videos, and you've probably seen me in your actual training. So you might be tired of me. 
uh, but I'm not going anywhere. So I'm happy to see you guys here today. Uh, a little background on me. I do come from the construction industry. I also hail from Tennessee, uh, but currently located in Sacramento, California. I've uh, been here for several years now. And then my main focus with the customer success team um, is in the central United States. So if, you, if you're located there, you've probably worked with me. Um, but I also try to try to help out with all of our different accounts throughout the United States. Um, and happy that you're here. Uh, if, if you've worked with me, you probably, we probably butted the heads a little bit. We've talked about different approaches to scheduling. We've worked through some of those issues. Um, and we take a lot of pride in that. We try to be as responsive as possible and help shape the product to be a scheduling and planning software that works for the construction industry. That is our only focus um, unlike maybe some of the other softwares. So happy that you guys are here. We're going to show a whole lot about the iPad today uh, and then do some polls at the end and I'll hand it over to Mike. Hi, I'm Mike, head of customer success at Outbuild. Been here two and a half years now. Ben is actually approaching his two year uh, anniversary. So we've we've all of a sudden become wily old vets at uh, at this whole tech thing coming from the construction industry. Um, I've, I've brought about 15 years of experience with me, a bunch of different seats. Uh, I was subcontractor, general contractor, designer and an owner. Uh, so with that in mind, um, we do love what we do. We, we, I've, you know, we built this team. We made sure every one of us, uh, love to teach, love to help people, love to be on chats, all this other stuff. So we really enjoy everybody spending time with us. We're at 54 people already. We're growing even faster here. So this is awesome. This is only our third one and we've been topping 50 every time. So thank you everybody for being here. Um, and then Skylar, if you want to unmute yourself and, and say hi to the people. Hi guys, I'm Skylar. Like Brittany said, I am the newest member of the customer success team and I am located in Virginia Beach. I look forward to working with all of you. Thank you, Skylar. Awesome. Oops, went ahead. Um, so again, just to refresh what we are talking about today uh, about empowering the field team with the Outbuild iPad app. You don't have to be stuck at a desk or in the office or a job site trailer. You can get a lot of your work done right on site um, without having um, to spend that time elsewhere. Um, so going to get right to it. So the um, learning resources here, this is where you can find all of our knowledge base. So any articles related to the iPad app will be in this knowledge base, as well as that live help chat. If you are a type of person that likes to figure it out yourself, we have a plethora of um, articles that um, us as a CS team have formulated and put in this knowledge base here. Um, so just in the top corner of the platform, that question mark, hit that and you will find all of your resources. Now, all right. Look at this guy. So handsome. <laughs> all right. So this, this is, is a cruel joke that they pulled on me. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, so the Outbuild iPad app, it is fairly new. So I've been with Outbuild about a year and almost a half now. Um, when I first got here, the Outbuild iPad app did not exist. Everybody was talking about it, very excited, but it was not real yet. Um, so it's very exciting to see how far it has come in just a year. So the features that we have now, um, you can update progress from the field. So any progress that is updated on the iPad app automatically syncs up to the look ahead on the web version, as well as the master schedule in the web version. So we are talking real time updates of progress. The look ahead task. You don't have to build out your task in the web version of Outbuild. All you have to have is that master schedule um, milestone frame. Once you have that framework, you can open up that iPad and start creating your task within the iPad app. You can also manage and create roadblocks. So any constraints, issues that happen on site, you can flag those right when it happens. So if you get to a site, you notice that um, you're still waiting on a delivery of material. Maybe there's an equipment failure. Maybe you need new dimensions on a drawing. You can create that roadblock right when it happens tag the person that is responsible for getting that roadblock removed. And then after it's removed, continue on to your work. You can manage and update all of your constraints right there. You can also switch between projects and date range. So before the look ahead was just the current next four weeks. Now in the iPad app, you can change the date in the iPad. And I'll talk about this when I do um, my live demo so you can see what I'm talking about. But you can get ahead of, of, of your work. So if you are on um, 
you know, it's March, we're about to start April, you can switch the date and start working on May, June, July's activities and tasks. So getting ahead of the curve at the start of the job, building out your task when you have a few minutes to spare um, makes a world of difference. Um, and then lastly, any changes that are made in the iPad app. I talked about progress already, but any changes to task, if you are changing dates of task, adding in different responsible parties, changing the companies, creating companies, all of that syncs automatically up to your web version look ahead and master schedule. So now that I've talked about it, I'm going to cut to a live demo of the Outbuild iPad app. Um, so let me switch my screen real quickly. All right. All right. And before I get into it, I do want to point out a couple of things. Um, we have a rock star developer, um, Daniel, who is leading the team in developing this iPad app. With uh, every sprint or every two weeks of work, we are releasing an update um, for the iPad app. So not only is it any bug fixes and performance improvements, we are also adding new features. So if you are not up to date on the iPad app, you could be missing out on our latest um, new features. So make sure when you are utilizing this app that you are on the latest version. We are on version 1.25. Um, so make sure it says that um, in your iPad app for uh, Outbuild. All right, so I have logged in. You will log in using your same credentials. Uh, as you do for Outbuild, it will bring you to your dashboard. I have all of these projects, but I am looking for this one. So Brittany's awesome webinar project here. Uh, you can switch between schedules. So for my project, I have different schedules. If you hit that carrot, it will show you which ones you have. So for this project, I have my baseline, my main schedule, and a rework stage. So a stage that our schedule that I am just testing out um, some different scenarios in. I'm going to stay in this uh, main schedule here. So first things first, if you are familiar with our web version, this does look extremely similar to um, the web version of the look ahead. So there's not a transition of whether you're working on the web, web version or the iPad, um, same functionality. Uh, you have your headings uh, that are the activities. So bracing is a master schedule activity. Delivery through inspection are the tasks that make up bracing. Um, you can add in tasks just the same way by hitting that plus sign. So if I want to create a new task for bracing, I just have to come up here, click that plus sign. I'm going to add in a new task the same way I do um, in the web version. I will give it an, a task name um, and then I can change the duration. Uh, so let's say I want to make this five days. I can change the start date. We'll push it to, uh, let's do the 29th. Um, I can add in a company. So if I want to do, let's say, concrete, I'm going to assign to this responsible party. So this is anybody that is in your project. Um, you can make responsible for this task. So I'll make Anna concrete. And if I want to add a tag, this is like our sticky notes. I can add any of the tags that are already uh, created for this project. So I'll put a safety tag on this task. When I hit Add task, that task is now a part of this bracing uh, activity. I will get a notification that that task has been added um, to the look ahead. And that notification signifies that now that task can be seen on um, the look ahead and the master schedule. So once you get that notification, you are reassured that this information matches what you see on Outbuild and the master schedule and the look ahead. Uh, some cool things I do want to point out. Um, I was talking about Roblox before. Um, so Roblox are here in the traffic cone. They account for any constraints or issues or things that need to be resolved on, on the site. So deliver panels. If you come to the traffic cone and click that traffic cone, you can create a Roblox um, simply by hitting the Roblox. So deliver panels. Um, well, the roadblock is in, it needs to be delivered um, or scheduled delivery. Uh, actually, we'll do confirm delivery. 
I'm going to pick a category, category, uh, let's go with material, responsible. I'm going to pick on Ben. I'll make Ben responsible for this. And he has until Friday to confirm this delivery. Um, so when I create that roadblock, it is going to populate on um, the robot column here. Ben it will get an email in about 30, 60 seconds, letting him know that he needs to confirm that these panels will be delivered. Um, and he's going to know that he needs that done um, by Friday. Now on the iPad app, it looks like you can't see all that information. But if you click into the robot column, it pulls up this robot card. Similar to the activity card um, that you see in the master schedule, it pops up on the bottom of the screen. So you can see the different roadblocks that are assigned to this task. Now I can make changes to this if I need to change this roadblock name. Maybe Ben is not responsible for confirming this. It's somebody else. I can make Marcos um, responsible for that. I can change the required by date. If I have another day that I can um, wait on this delivery, can change that if needed. And then I can also change the status from here. So if I know that this has been delivered or Ben is in here and he sees that this is still open, but he's already confirmed the delivery, he can change that to removed. So everything that you can do as far as tracking your constraints and outbuild, you can do on the iPad app. And I think that is a very powerful tool. I know I have a lot of teams that um, before coming to outbuild, they are holding their constraints on either Excel sheets or whiteboards, pieces of paper. So to have this all consolidated um, in one location that everybody can see, um, I, I think it's really a powerful tool. All right. Has there been any questions asked? I know I, I've just talked a lot. Um, are we good, good in the chat? Right now we're okay. Does anybody have any questions? Mm -mm -mm. I thought I saw a hand raised. Let me see if I can see that. Um, all you right. Can, you can put your questions into the Q&A or just into the actual chat. Either one's totally acceptable. All right. If um, there's no questions, I will keep talking, but don't let me talk to myself. This whole Oh, you can pick a person that was not assigned to the company that was pre-picked. You can pick a person. Uh, okay, so for responsible in the task, um, you can assign a different person. It's not assigned to the concept. Yes, so the answer to that is yes, you can make those changes. You do have to have permission to make those changes too. Um, so we have different roles. So if I was a project partner, so, um, for example, Excavation Inc. If I was um, a project partner, I worked for Excavation Inc., I would not be able to make those changes. Um, but if I was an admin or um, project leader, superintendent, I could make those changes. All right, answered that. Can you? And Chris asks, can you filter the task to a specific area of the project, um, building to floor three? So you do have filtering options. It is not by area. You can filter by responsible company or tags. Um, so if you have a certain company or a, a certain responsible party for those tasks, you can filter here. So if I just want to look um, at excavations uh, task, I'll hit that. Now I just have the view for excavation Inc. Chris, to further answer that question, if, you, if you're looking to organize your look ahead by location, you could use tags to do that. Yes. Uh, yeah. So in like this zone one tag, for example, um, I have some teams that are use, utilizing zone tags. So they have zone one, zone two, zone three um, that you can uh, utilize and then you will be able to filter by zone. Awesome. All right. Um, moving on, so we talked about Roblox. Uh, one of the newer newer improvements for the Outbuild iPad app is this quick action progress button. So next to the Roblox, if you hit this circle, it's going to mark it 100% complete. You'll get that notification. It's going to flow up to the master schedule activity of exterior skin. So, and now according to all my other tasks, I marked this complete. I'm now at 4.17% complete for exterior skin. 
Um, that goes uh, both ways too. So if you wanna quickly remove all progress, you can uh, click that circle again. We have also recently made changes to how you update progress um, in the progress column. So if I click this 0% on setup hoist, I can either update progress by percent or remaining days. Um, so it says I have two days left. If I want to now say I have one day left, I'll click inside of remaining days, hit one, enter. Now I'm at 50% complete based on the remaining days that I entered. And I will hit update. So now I have updated both deliver panels, set up hoist, and you can go through your look ahead quickly and either mark it 100% complete or progress by remaining days. Same way for start and end dates. If you click in there, you can quickly shift um, the start date of all of your tasks. Um, you'll just pick a new date and then hit apply. And that'll change that start date. Same with duration. Um, roadblock column, we talked about uh, already when we were talking about constraints. Company, you can change company. I do want to point out, though, I am admin. So all of these things are clickable, modifiable for me because I am at the admin level. Depending on your permission role, you will not be able to make changes to some of these fields. But I want to show you the full capability of the Outbuild iPad app. All right, the same functionality is found in the responsible columns and the tags. So if you if you get to the job site and you realize that maybe it's a different um, team lead uh, associated with a certain task, you can quickly make that change. So now your look ahead is always accurate um, and you know who to go to for either progress updates, constraints updates. If I wanna change Bob Lands to um, Colin or add Colin, you can have multiple responsible parties as well. Add in your tags. So if, um, again, if something happens, if you know there's gonna be a delay on a task, you can filter, um, you can add your delay task and then filter your look ahead by delay. So right now in the tags column, I can see I have two delay tasks. But if you have an extensive look ahead, maybe a, a you know 20 to 50 tasks, maybe you wanna just look at the items that you have ta tagged with delay, you can come to that filter in the top right corner, go down to where it says tags, click delay. Now my view is narrowed to just those items that are marked delay. Now I can focus on what I need to um, change or what needs to happen for me to make sure that delay um, is taken care of and it doesn't cause a further delay. Maybe I need to add somebody else on this. Um, maybe I need to change the date so that we have more time to complete that task. Going to clear my filters. All right, and then at the end, um, this is where you can see which company is where and when. So very similar to the ex, uh, the PDF export of the look ahead on the web version. And now you have it live. Um, the colors are um, coded to the company that is assigned to those tasks. The number inside each box is going to be that crew size, um, and that is a projected crew size. So as you're planning, this is the amount of people that you expect to be on site for the duration of that task. If that changes, you can make changes um, to your projection, um, but that is um, to be used as a projected crew size uh, for the folks on site. Um, you can, again, change the date range. So right now, I'm, I'm looking at the current four weeks of my look ahead. If I wanna go further out, I'll come to this calendar icon. Um, and let's say I wanna look at what's coming up uh, in May, we'll go way out. So I'll change the date to May 1st, I'll hit apply. Now I have everything um, that is coming up in the May, May weeks, I'll scoot over here. Obviously not everything is, is built out yet because I'm two months out, this is where I can start adding in uh, my details. So if you don't have any task built out on the web version of the look ahead and you come to the iPad app, I just want to make it clear that the activity is going to come over as this line item riser. So number 16 risers, that's the master schedule activity. There are no tasks created yet, but that's not a problem because you can just start adding your tasks. So if you wanna hit the um, plus button and start building out each of your tasks, your mechanical, electrical, plumbing, um, assigning your responsible parties, 
you do not have to do that on a desktop. I, the supers I know don't want to be tied down to a desk or an office. They'd rather be in the field, um, keeping an eye on the work and live tracking what's going on with the job site. Hey, Brittany, we have a good question from Rob as well. So Rob out in Maui, he's asking about, is there a way to show a deficit in crew size compared to what was planned? Got it. Um, so in the web version, we do have an actual crew size column. Um, so in the web version, you can um, pull out that column and show the actual crew size and compare it um, to the crew size that was projected we know a lot of manpower. Most teams are tracking that in Procore, so we, did, we didn't want to duplicate of efforts or double data entry. So you can track that in Outbuild, or you'll just have that projected and compare that to your day, daily logs in manpower. All right, any other questions? All right, so moving on. Um, I talked about changing the date frame. Um, so this is how you can get ahead of um, what you currently are doing. You can work on the entire project if you want to. If you have some time, um, maybe you're you're waiting on, on a crew to show up to the job site. Maybe you're waiting on a, a delivery, maybe a piece of equipment and you have a few moments to spare. You can go ahead, change the date, work on the next few weeks. We are, you should already have this week and the next couple of weeks pretty set. Um, but if you wanna get ahead of the curve, work on a couple months out. Uh, filtering up here, this is where you can filter by responsible company tags. This button next to the filter button is gonna be how you refresh the page. Um, so if you wanna make sure that you are working on the most current data, hit this refresh. It's just gonna refresh the look ahead um, in the app. You know, you can, uh, it's a collaborative tool. So you can't have people working in the master schedule and the desktop version of the look ahead. So you wanna make sure that you are working on the um, most current information. So you can hit the um, refresh button there. All right. That is the, uh, like I, we like to say in the South, the meat and potatoes of the iPad app. Um, I will, uh, go back to the um, the presentation. If there are no other questions or any features that you would like me to point out, it really is made to be as simple as possible. Um, if you can operate an app on the iPad app, all you need is your finger to adjust progress, change dates. Uh, we wanted to make it as user-friendly as possible. All right. Thanks, Mike, for answering. Sorry, Brittany, I, I sent that to the wrong person too. My bad. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's okay. There we go. That might work better. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mike. All right. I am going to switch back now. Uh, let me get back here. All right. Back looking at this guy. <laughs> you definitely can move off this slide now. I think we've been on the slide long enough. All right, um, so moving on, we already discussed all of the features. Basically, whatever you can do in um, the Outbuild desktop version, web version, you can do in the iPad app. All right, um, so I do want to move on to what is coming up. I did discuss some of the newer items in the iPad app, but we do have a few more that I wanna discuss. Um, so this is what we are working on currently for the month of March um, and April. So if you haven't seen, I tried to notify my teams that did ask about this specifically. Um, so add hyperlinks to description fields. This is super cool. Um, you can link to any website software that your team is using outside of Outbuild and Procore. Um, so in the description column, which you can pull out, um, it's, it used to be a free text field, it still is, but now when you enter a website, you it becomes a hyperlink and you can click straight to that. So even for like documents, um, if you have pictures on your Google Drive that you want a quick link to, um, you can add in that link to your description columns in the master schedule and the look ahead. Adaptive text color for companies, also a high request. Um, so I'm sure some of you might have seen if you choose a bright color, that text is sometimes a bit difficult to see. Um, so coming um, at the end of this month, you'll be able the 
text color will change according to that company color that you choose. Um, so no longer have to worry about company names being difficult to see. All right. I think one of our most highly anticipated items, schedule of schedules, this is going to be a timeline view of all of your projects within your Outbuild account overlaid so um, that you can see every, every project in one schedule. So like a master schedule, but each line item is a different project. Um, and after we first release that overlay, you'll then be able to filter by um, responsible and companies. So then you can start making sure your electrician is not on three projects at the same time. Um, so we, I know we have a lot of teams that are super excited uh, about the schedule of schedules. So it is coming soon. Um, we are looking at mid-April for that. Uh, something with the look ahead, uh, this also came from clients. Um, when you filter the look ahead currently, it is solely based off start and end date of your master schedule activities. Um, coming next month, that filter, um, so you won't just be able to pick three, four, up to eight weeks. You will soon be able to pick if it brings over those incomplete or past due activities. Um, so you don't have to worry about any activities getting lost that aren't um, brought into the current four weeks. You can add that filter option in there. All right, and then for iPad, um, this uh, first iPad one, update task end date based on progress. So currently, if you progress a task to 100%, it does not automatically update that end date. So if you mark something complete um, on today, March 27th, and that end date is April 1st, even though you mark it 100% complete, it's not gonna bring up that end date. Um, we know that that is an extra step that our field team does not really have time to do. So next month, you'll be able to automatically update that end date based off um, that progress. So if you mark something 100% complete on 327, you'll have the option to bring up that end date to 327. And lastly, um, modification request. This is one of the only features that um, you cannot do on the iPad app that you can do on uh, the web version. Um, so modification requests, that is with delays. So if your task gets pushed out past those master schedule dates, you'll be able to send a modification request from the iPad app. That's alerting the master schedule that your task is now going past those dates. You're documenting a delay. Um, I know most of you are familiar of that process in um, the look ahead on the web version. It's gonna be coming soon to the iPad app as well. All right. Now I'll ask questions again. I know I just said a lot. Um, so if you have any questions um, about the iPad app or the features that are coming up, or if you want to give us some suggestions of what you think should be coming up um, in the near future, this is the time to ask, comment. All right. I'll kind of prime the pumps out there too. If anybody wants to throw in the chat, who uh, who is actually using the iPad app in the field right now? It'd be great to kind of hear from the 50 plus participants here. Um. Cool. Good to hear, Oliver. We got a question from Chad, uh, Chad too. If somebody wants to grab that one. I'll, I'll respond to that. Do we want to respond live? We can do that. Um, <laughs> I was about to type in there. Uh, Chad, to answer your question, uh, when downloading a schedule, when will it be able to have the bubble look, not the square or Excel look? Um, the reason why we have that Excel type format within the look ahead um, is it kind of translates over from kind of legacy look ahead. So a lot of teams in the field are used to seeing that format through Excel. So we wanted to make that that change uh, as simple as possible. Um, with that being said, we are going to be taking a look uh, at our look ahead exportables um, over the coming year and, and maybe add some different options in there. Um, I can't speak for our development team, but I like the idea of printing your look ahead like you can print your schedule. So it, it, if I'm understanding that bubble look correctly, uh, where it has those status bars, kind of like you see in the software. Does that answer your question? Yeah. 
Awesome. Thank you, Chad. Thanks, Chad. And me and Chad have talked about that before. Um, it's not the only, the first one to ask about that. Um, but like Ben said, our field teams they that came over, they are used to seeing it in that square type format, like an Excel sheet. So to make that transition even easier, so they aren't looking at, you know, what looks like a Gantt, um, we deployed that uh, look first. All righty. Um, I think it, we can go ahead and start uh, launching these polls. Um, so I do have a couple polls. I know I am just about at time. So uh, let me go ahead and get these polls started. All right, the first poll is going to be about um, the iPad app improvements. Um, so what feature or functionality do you want to see next in the Outbuild iPad app? I already told you about the modification request coming up. Um, so if there is anything else, um, please let us know. All of our improvements and new features, they didn't come from our brains. They came from our teams, our clients. Um, so if you want to put in what you think you would like to see next in the iPad app. All right. And I don't, I, like, I don't like how it blocks the panelists and hosts like we can't vote on things i was just about to say <laughs> it's probably it's probably a good thing though we we shouldn't be voting on this stuff all right we got some answers there um mike or ben can i launch both at the same time or do i need to wait i don't know hit the button see what happens okay <laughs> <All right. laughs> so we have a oh are you saying well, we, we've, we've said this every time. This is our third webinar, so we're learning a bunch of stuff about these webinars too. So um, I, think it, I think it'll work, right? Actually, it's bringing me to the same window, so. Uh, I probably not then. Close this. All right. Uh, we got a couple answers. Or, yeah, we got a few answers. Um, I will leave this up for a second. All right, so... um. I know we are about to close, um, but I do, I'm gonna leave this up for like 30 seconds and then I'll switch to the next one. Um, do want to let you guys know that we aren't just developing a software to look cool, um, to connect um, the, out, the look ahead and the master schedule. We really are trying to um, give power to our field team so that they you don't need to micromanage their work. They know what's going on in the field um, and they have autonomy um, to dictate what happens Monday through Friday. And then we have those measures in place to account for delays that can occur with a modification request. Um, so it's empowering them and also saving them time. Like I mentioned before, it can... Um, it adds hours sometimes to get back to a desk or a laptop or, you know, back to the office to do your daily updates um, and, and and provide changes to the look at. So to be able to do that while you're on the field, um, we are very passionate about. I am definitely going to go over. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the second poll, which is about the topic coming up. Our next webinar webinar is going to be about pool planning. Uh, it's going to be ran by Mike. So that next poll, um, we want to ask specific topics about a pool planning uh, session. What do you want Mike to cover? Um, so we got some answers in here. I'm going to end this poll um, and launch the next poll. There we go. All right. So again, what specific topics do you want to cover in the next trailer talk about pool planning? I'm waiting for for the responses of make make everybody super efficient and get the job done early, right? That's the <laughs> it's the secret sauce everyone's trying to find. Uh, a couple Rob, of good questions in there too, yeah, Ben. If you want to take one of the yeah, I'll go I'll go ahead and and answer uh, Rob Bullock's question live. Uh, so when replicating activities from the Gantt or master schedule. Is there a way to eliminate the duplicate titles and bars in the PDF of the look ahead schedule? Um, to answer that question in short, kind of by the nature of that feature, it, it, it creates that duplicate. Um, and so right now, the way the exportable is designed, 
it shows the activity and any tasks. And so that is, that's when you're starting to get that kind of duplicate look. Um, kind of to our point earlier, as we're exploring some improvements to uh, the look ahead exportable, there's some open discussion about, hey, is there an option to print my look ahead without tasks? And it shows the bars for those activities. Um, in that case, it would remove that need to replicate um, and then give you maybe an exportable that that you might be looking for. Um, so hopefully that answers your question, Rob. Uh, but but in short, current answer is is we don't have a solution there, but it is something we're aware of. All right. Um, and just to touch on on Chad, I know Michael, you're talking to Chad in the chat. Um, Chad, we are working on that. Um, it is iPads uh, specific uh, to your device. And um, so we will meet after this um, webinar to discuss that. Um, and then we do have some questions. Um, Mike, uh, do you want to do the sure. raffle first and then we can go back to these cute, these uh, questions? Yeah, for sure. If people don't have another meeting till the top of the hour, we definitely can go over. We like to aim for 45 minutes if people need to jump off it's the main content but questions and all this stuff we can we're happy to stay on as long as we we need to here i know Brittany, you actually have to jump too but we got you covered as long as you make one of us a host before you leave right so uh yeah let me share oh let me stop sharing and what's great about this specific trailer talk is that we can actually raffle off an iPad. So in the background here, I I have been paying attention, but I've also been madly scribbling names down as I'm tracking the people that have been in the call. Thank you again for sticking through the whole time. We'd like to reward you for that. So now we're going to click from the wheelofnames.com uh, name picker. We're going to click and find a name of who we're going to give away an iPad to today. Da, 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 da. Zach B. I'll be reaching out to you. We'll get that shipped to you. So thank you for being a part of this all the way through. You got an iPad from Outbuild coming your way. Woohoo. Nice. All right. <laughs> nice. Wow. <laughs> that is, I can feel that excitement. <laughs> yeah, that is. He's like, yes, cool. <laughs> Good Wednesday. <laughs> I thought it was just a webinar. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can answer Adam's question too, real quick. Um, in the Q and A, so he's asking: Is it possible to add a photo as an attachment to an activity, or as a supplement to a change to an activity? So, we just released what we said that that hyperlink. So again, it's a it's an extra step to be able to you know you have a picture loaded into a cloud folder somewhere or in Procore already. Um, the Procore one will be easier for us to integrate. But you can connect the URL to any picture in there. And then that's very much an improvement we want to do with the iPad. Well, you're making a roadblock and then you have the thing in front of you. You're standing out in the field. You can take a picture of it and the data is captured that way as well. Because, you know, obviously pictures capture a lot more data than as much as you can type on an iPad as you're walking through the field. So, yeah, we've, we've seen that one a lot. Definitely um, adds gasoline to the fire of us being able to forecast issues and things that are in the way when you add pictures to stuff and hold people accountable to things. A good suggestion. Right. Any, yeah. is that all the questions? All right. Um, oh, oh, you guys are welcome. Everybody's thanking us. Uh, Yes. It is our pleasure to do this. Uh, we really enjoy it and we enjoy what we do and helping your team succeed with Outbuild. Um, our next uh, webinar is going to be on Wednesday, April 24th. Um, you'll be sent out automatic uh, links to register for that webinar. After this is done processing, you'll be able to download this presentation in case you want to watch our faces again in your free time or share with your team. Um, but again, thank you so much for your time. I hope it was um, informative and you leave knowing more and excited to use the Outbuild iPad app. Thank you, everybody. Look forward to seeing you in a month. Bye. Thank you, guys.